How's it going YouTube? Right, today let's have a talk about charge coolers. Okay, before I start, I just want to say a big thanks to everybody that's subscribed to this channel. I bit shocked by it actually I'm, I'm mainly making these videos for myself because I like playing with a car I like playing with cameras I like playing with computers so the, I find the editing interesting so but to see you guys subscribe to this channel that's great thanks and we've got quite a good number of subscribers now as well and anybody else that's watching these videos please consider subscribing cheers Right, today I'm having a look at the charge cooler. The main reason is because when I'm setting off, the last thousand revs of the rev range is the temperatures suddenly jumping up from 30 degrees to around 50 degrees, which is normally, it's either insufficient cooling or the turbo's working too hard. So what we'll do is I'll get changed and we'll go and strip mine out we'll have a look at it uh, there's two main types of charge coolers uh, what we'll do is I've got both types so we'll have a look at both of them I'll explain the differences as best I can and the one I'm actually putting on is bigger but less efficient and I'll explain why we'll have a look let's go right before I take it out let's have a quick look what we've got so there we are, out of the turbo, into the charge cooler, through the charge cooler, out, round to the throttle body. Here we've got water coming in, passing through the radiator inside the charge cooler, and this one's water out into the header tank. I added a header tank because this system was a nightmare to, ble to bleed. So what I did it was I, had, I added the header tank and then all the air gets let out here. This is the highest point. And also it increases the volume of water in the system. The more water you can get in the system, the longer it'll take to heat soak. So what I'll do is we'll get, all, we'll get this off again and we'll strip all this out. And then this, we'll have a look at it on the bench with the side of the new one. I'll explain the differences and let's have a changeover. I've just been having a good look at everything and I don't think I'm going to change it for the new one. There's the old one. There. There's the new one. There's the old one at the side of the new one, which is considerably smaller, but I don't think it's going to be as good. Let's go and have a look on the bench. I'll explain why. Right, we've got two charge coolers here. Let me explain the difference. This one is what's known as a across the flow cooling. It's hot air from the turbo coming in and your cooled air coming out. On the ends you've got your water fittings. Cold water coming in in one end and your water that's warmed from the cooling effect coming out the other end. What this does is you've got the cold water going across and the air flowing across the water. So what happens is all the air goes in here and all this is radiator so what happens is your air comes across gets cooled and out of this end but what happens with this type is the water comes in cold there as it's going across the hot air the water's gradually getting warmer and warmer and warmer until it goes out this end so what you find is the air going across this portion here is not getting cooled as efficiently as the air getting across this portion here. So the distance of cooling is literally this much, but this cooling here will be more than this cooling here. So this is quite inconsistent, the cooling. 
even though it's quite a large charge cooler. This one is what's known as an against the flow uh, charge cooler. That one was off of eBay, that was about £130. This one is an AVT charge cooler, I can't remember but I think this one cost me about £400, which is three times as much as this one. The reason why is here you have your hot air coming in and your cold air coming out. What you're supposed to do is put your cold water coming in here and it goes across and your warmed water comes out of there. What happens is you've got the cooling, all the, the radiators down there, the cooling all happens cons consistently across the full length of the charge cooler. It, the cold water here hits the cool he the air first, which means it's more efficiently cooling because the water's colder, the air's cooler, it'll cool faster. As it gets to this end, the water warms up, the air warms up, but it's still cooling, and it's cooling consistently along it. So as the air travels along, the air gets cooler, it hits cooler water, so it's cooling even more. And because it's running along the length, the same length as the water, it's consistent. So I actually believe this one, even though it's smaller, will be a lot more efficient than this one. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back on. We might not have changed anything today, but hopefully you guys have learned something and I've decided I'm wasting money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something different. Right, so I'm going to get this fitted back in because I think I'm wasting my time changing it for the other type. Even though it looks a lot bigger, it's actually not. The actual radiator, when you hold them side by side, this one's round, that one's square. But apart from that, it's about the same. The best way of making this one more efficient, we need colder water and faster water. We need more volume of water traveling across this charge cooler to make it more efficient. So what we need to do is I need to search for a pump that's faster and a pump more volume. That's the first job. Well, not the first job. The first job, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit some fans to the radiator at the front. I've got a, a digital fan controller. I'm going to take one of the vents out in the dashboard and fit that in. We'll do that in another video. I'll fit the digital fan controller into the dashboard and we'll wire it up because at the minute the radiator at the front, I've not got any fans on it, which could be a reason. So we need to get some fans on the radiator, get the water cooler, keep the water cooler. I'm going to search for a bigger pump, more powerful pump. Another thing that we can do that I might do is the pipe work underneath the car. If I change that for a bigger diameter pipe, that gives us more volume in the water of the water. So obviously the more water we've got, the less chance it's got of heat soaking. Uh, the other way is to get a bigger radiator, but it's starting to get expensive and I'm far too tight for that. So what we'll do first is we'll fit some fans. We'll see what difference that makes. I might try and change the pipes. I'll make it up as I go along and let's see. But one thing is definite is this is going back in. This, to me, looking at the designs of the two side by side, this proves that sometimes eBay crap isn't worth it. Even though it looks bigger and pretty, this is definitely more efficient. So let's get this back in. What I might do actually is insulate this to stop any heat transferring into this because obviously the outer the outer jacket is water. Insulate this, get it back in there, try and make it look a bit tidier. There we are, insulated. It's not the prettiest of things, but got quite a bit of insulation on it, so hopefully that'll help a bit. We'll worry about aesthetics later. Let's get it back on.
right here we are all back together this is actually the next day now because I was hungry so priorities and all that so let's have a look what I've done right I've put the old charge cooler back in I've insulated it it kind of looks a bit weird it looks like a giant bacon roll that's been put in there I've changed all the piping actually I've made the bit at the back shorter I've made this a bit longer and put a slight elbow in it so it it all goes round a bit smoother and this is a bit squarer now I've changed this hose because this kept kinking so I've used this like clear silicon hose it's got a mixture of water and antifreeze in there uh, it looks kind of funky it looks a bit like my water cooled PC at home it's a bit weird but I think it looks all right and at least it's it's nice and flowing now so that's all back together that's all running I can't really go out and test anything because it's raining and I'll kill myself I don't think actually this will make a great deal of difference to the temperatures anyway so I think what we need to do next is the fan at the front and the temperature controller and we'll take it from there I think what I will do before I do any work on the fans or anything at the front or the pump if I get another pump is I'll, I'll take it out for a run I'll do some logging of the temperatures so we can have a look at the graphs I'm not too concerned about it it's nothing major and I don't really want to do anything that's going to give me any more power anyway this is right on the limit and I'm surprised I haven't blown it up yet to be honest so we've not really achieved anything but hopefully you guys have learnt something and you can see the difference between a cheap eBay item and something of quality these charge callers that are in there the AVT ones they're not cheap but you can see by the design they're a lot they're a lot more efficient so I'll catch you next time we'll do something else I've got a couple of jobs I need to do so we'll have a play catch you guys later